Hello friends, this is Ganesh and video number 8 on Auditor Servers. In this session, I am going to continue uh, from the previous video, Deep Entity Set Part 2. I have explained uh, how to design a Deep Entity Set for a POST method. So POST method is nothing but uh, we are receiving the information from uh, UI application and the same thing to be segregated inside the Auditor Servers uh, area or design. and uh, with the help of any BAPIs or custom function modules, we are going to update the backend system. So this is the flow of uh, POST method. So something we have to create based on the UI request. So here, additionally, uh, we are going to receive the data as a deep entity. It's nothing but they are going to send more rele relevant information like header, item, item 1, item 2. It's not number of items, it's saying in different segments. So they're going to send a header and item details, shipment details. So based on that, I'm going to update my backend system. And along with that, this is a post method. So we have to send a response back to the UI application, uh, stating that what happened in the backend, whether the data is created or not. So these are the informations which I explained in the part two video. And today we're going to see everything in the system. Okay, uh, just I'll go through the same uh, slides very quickly and then we'll get into the system. And uh, before that, I want to show you one thing which I missed in the session or part two. This area, the navigation paths, once again. So over here, yeah, this one. Uh, I have explained what is this. This is a header. This is an item with two records and this is the another uh, segment called shipment which has only one record and this is a written parameter we have to initiate or include the uh, written details as well with the empty values because return is going to come from the backend system after it's created the record so it should be coming from uh, order data service to the ui application here our test environment is sap gateway client that is our test environment so uh, I'm going to see what, what has happened in the backend system. So this is also to be included. I missed in the part two information, but this is optional. Okay. If you're not included, it, you won't get any return things. Okay. So here return is not a mandatory, but you should send the information back to the UI application, right? So we have added it. So there is a one part of the input file and this is a JSON format. So quickly, uh, what we are going to do is step one, I'm going to create a deep entity set uh, in uh, MPC extension class. You already know it because we have seen this in the part one of deep entity set. Uh, go to the MPC extension class and just create one deep entity set. This is a header and these are items and this could be a work area and these are uh, internal tables. Okay. And this is a, a, some sample for your deep entity set creation. After that, we are going to redefine a method called define that is coming under MPC extension class, not a data provider is coming in the model provider. So here we have to redefine the method called define and just three lines to be included. So this is only for to initiate for your entity type. Okay. So I need one uh, data reference here. I used a very normal syntax, not the new one. Uh, LO entity type for this particular uh, interface and I need to uh, do I need to call a actual method because the rate definition right so I need to call the uh, super method as well so I, I just use a super keyword to call the method super class method and uh, here uh, for the for the same uh, reference we have to use get entity type equal to what is your source entity name uh, name is nothing but what is the the first entity is going to be triggered normally it's a header it's not item or uh, shipment because those are dependent objects so obviously it's going to be header information you have to uh, write the entity name not entity set name just an entity name so maybe probably i'm going to create with s underscore header only so it's a s header or header what is the entity name you have to give within single quotes and and you have to bind the structure of your deep entity set that is nothing but we created just not created we're going to create one deep entity set right so that particular structure you have to give that particular name so here name is nothing but the class name where actually you created i created under the class mpc class so i just give the mpc extension class and then structure what is the structure i have created deep entity set structure so that's it only these lines are required in the define method so this is step number two and this is coming under mpc extension class 
And the next one is this one I have explained in the last one, last video. Uh, we need a method to write the entire code. So that method is called create deep entity method. This is coming under DPC because we are going to write a code, right? So it's coming under uh, data provider class only. We have to redefine it and include just do whatever you want. And some examples, maybe you can see, suppose I want to redefine this and I want to call my own method. So that is up to you, up to your design. So you can create one more uh, custom method inside the DPC extension class and you can call it. Okay, it depends on the structure, so no issues on that. So uh, step one, I'm going to gather the information. Uh, this is going to be my UI uh, input, so return is empty. I'm going to segregate into header, item, and uh, shipment entity. And, uh, and I'm going to use these three uh, internal tables to pass this custom function model to update the data to the backend system. And once it is updated, it's going to give a return parameter, either success or failure, whatever it comes, I'm just sending back to the UI application. And once everything is done, we have to fill this entity, ER deep entity is one of the signature or parameter for create deep entity method. So that needs to be filled, then only you are able to see the output in the UI application or your gateway client. So once everything is done, it will be visible in your gateway client. Okay. So these are the from the previous one and uh, these are some technical like what needs to be done. Uh, read data from UI input to your internal table deep entity set as using this method and segregate everything is a basic about so nothing new over here and use a function model to update the backend system and gather the FM output and feed into a deep entity set return parameter and finally your return parameter to be uh, um, included in your ER deep entity parameter of the method. So for that I'm going to use a method called copy data to ref method. Okay, so that's it and now I'm going to show you everything in the system. So here um, please recollect what we did in deep entity set 1. <coughs> We, uh, that is nothing but uh, we are sending the information to your application with header, item, shipment. Okay. I'm going to use the same because I don't want to waste your time as well. So the, I'm going to use the same project uh, for my deep entity set for receiving and updating the in information. So as you are aware, we have three custom tables because this is my rental system. So I have some issues to updating or creating a sales or purchase order. So I created a three. Um, custom tables and one custom function model. Mostly I avoid custom in my explanation but here I tried but uh, I didn't get any option so I just went with the custom. Okay so what I'm going to do was I'm going to copy the project this is the one which we have done so I'm going to copy this project I don't want to disturb the project right copy as deep entity part 2 okay uh, so this is deep entity set just a description for your reference and uh, this is to create data in the backend that's it local object so this will at least uh, decrease the time to create a data model so expand the data model so I'll show you the data model so one data model I have to include is return. So this is my header and the properties are um, SID and order type. So only two things and uh, for item the properties are might be ID and uh, item number and then material and finally I have I'm oh, sorry I have a shipment so here a yeah, shipment over here and it has two or three fields okay there are four fields so SID item and shipment and plant okay and uh, association if you see the association it's happened for item and shipment and you can see the navigation property as well for the header because once you create a, a association between item and shipment automatically creates the uh, navigation property as well okay so these are uh, already available and uh, what are you going to do was we are going to uh, create a return parameter first it's going to be a return model first we're going to return model and create an association for it and that needs a navigation property as well then i'm going to generate it it will create a mpc and dpc class then we'll continue okay so 
entity type i'm going to create one more entity type okay uh, sorry uh, let me include it sorry import it right click um create okay, data model right click over here import uh, ddic structure i'm going to use bappy return so bappy return to oh sorry And my structure is BAPI return to. Next, I don't want to everything. I just see I type ID number message, nothing big. Okay, so this is just an example. So based on your requirement, you can modify it. Okay, so key is important. So I can go with at least one key. So I just ID type and key. Okay, I just go with. and finish so return is done then I need to create the association for it so let me create association between header and a return there is no common uh, fields between that that doesn't matter over here so association name as header to return because we need a navigation name especially you want to give the information or input for the particular uh, segment or a model you need a navigation name for it so here i just go with header and it's going to be one and entity type name is return and it's zero to n so navigation name is headers okay i'll go with this header to return navigation okay just click next so it will ask the dependent property this is mandatory so no issues you can give the id itself as a dependent mandatory between header and return that's fine because it is a mandatory option so that's it i created an association so the design is ready okay only one part is i had a return and i created an association for that let me generate it then it will create the mpc and dpc classes okay and i have i just got some requests to create uh, some specific videos and definitely i'm happy to do it whenever i get a time i'll just do it and post it as well okay so now go to my mpc class because i want to create a deep entity set just go to mpc class open it and over here right go to types so whatever model you created it's created an independent uh, work area on internal table but i want one internal table which has everything that is a deep entity so i'm going to keep the uh, classes in a change mode anyways the z class just click any button any button it takes you to the same uh, editor where the uh, declarations are happened so here i'm going to write my deep entity set so types begin of type um okay just go with the same name ts deep entity e -N -T -I. the structure right entity and now you may ever just copy paste it to avoid uh, the spelling mistakes and the technical names so just i want the header first and this is just a fields i'm not having keeping these as a internal table and the item so here i already mentioned the item name should be equal to your navigation property name okay if not you can try if not what happens is it won't fill it won't fill the data to the particular uh, internal table okay so what is the name of uh, the navigation property slash or cgw excuse me um data model and uh, here open the uh, header then you are able to find the navigation property name for each one. So here 
go here yeah first is header to item nav header to shipment nav and header to return nav so i'm going to keep the same name here header to item nav pipe table of so that is already available right here so this is the one because it's independently created so i'm going to use the same structure for my reference with default key and same thing it's actually um, the other one is header to shipment navigation there is a mistake okay shipment navigation type table of so i know the name uh, if you go up uh, you can find it ts underscore shipment sorry ship so keep it there with default key and header to return navigate table of ts return so over here you can see ts r e t u r n with default key then close it end of ts deep e n t i -E. this is a custom name whatever you want you can give okay so i used to work with the same name so i'm going with the same name over here so ts e d m set is created save it and activate it once you activate it and go back you're able to see the deep entity structure which you created it's reflected in the initial screen of your class like types so here it is in it's created okay so this is step one Step two is you have to redefine the class. Oh, sorry, redefine the method called define. So even if you go here, okay, sorry, you're not here. Go here, method. What was the inherited method? So here is a define. So right click, redefine. Then automatically the define is coming under this redefine method. So here you have to declare one variable and you have to um just uh, mention what is your initial header entity type name and uh, you have to bind the structure of your deep entity set okay so let me do it first so here i just do the copy paste over here it's because it's not in my mind the exactly what is the interface name so to avoid the typing mistake I just copy pasted it what i showed in the ppt the same thing over here and here this is uh, s header and this is my class this one because where actually we declare the structure this is my mpc class and the structure name is ts deep entity so only these two you have to give in the define method okay so maybe it's a little big yeah so it's deep entity method sorry deep entity structure clear and act about it so this is step two and the step three or i can say the final step in the development perspective is redefine go to mpc class sorry go to dpc class so here go to dpc class and you need to redefine a method called create uh, deep entity so go to dpc and you can say methods and it's coming under inherited methods it's under this conversion SRB routine and here you can see okay no sorry not this service runtime expand it so here you have a method called create deep entry it's coming under service runtime so right click and redefine it so this is a place where you can start write your code okay so it's coming under redefinition method or a different folder i don't want anything from the super class method so i just deleted it now you can start writing the code the first code is i need to uh, have a deep entity one internal table to receive the deep entity method okay it's not actually it's a structure so i want only just work area for ent entity type table of this class means mpc class where we have created that structure so here it's mpc class and it's created with 
name ts deep enti to entity okay okay so okay sorry this is not table all because this is a work area only right it's a deep entity one and uh, i need some internal table to segregate the data so it's for header so this it's nothing but it's going to be the uh, table name which i showed you uh, on the last video is header item and shipment header and it's item type table of it's going to uh, read or keep the internal uh, data and it's going to be sent it to the <coughs> function module to create the data okay so this is the one and uh, what else i want okay let's write the code and whenever you want we come just uh, come and do the declaration and then step one i need to convert the data so change or uh, uh, convert the ui input to deep table okay so for that we have one uh, method to do that so here i will uh, enable the signature so this is the one okay io underscore data provider so it has a method read entity data so go to pattern and about patterns so here it is i o it's not there okay so here it is i o data provider and uh, and the classes uh, it's entry provider here it is so you can see if you any of the signature you can see right this uh, this is a reference variable is created for this class i'll show you that and the method is read entry data so this is the method which converts your data to deep entity internal table so here our deep entity internal table as wa deep entity that's it okay so after that we have some codes let me copy paste it uh, to just do the uh, time consuming process because it's normal uh, abap code only and before that i just show you the class name of the io data provider so this data provider is entry provider only so same class you have to give the give in the pattern window and this is the code so i just move the information from okay i'll do untie because i need to change the name here i use the same name so i'm going to change it here just a name that's that that's it okay so uh, here i'm going to pass the information to input information to header and item information to item information item and the shipment details from the input file to the shipment so just segregate this is another step segregate the input file into a, our internal table based on our bapi or function module okay so here uh, one more change uh, i just noticed name of the table is sales underscore header and here it is sales underscore item and here it is sales underscore ship okay and i need a work area for all those let me have the work area as well work area for header item and shipment okay just remove this and now the next step is i'm going to call the function module and i'm going to send the information to the function module and create the data once it is created i'll receive a return parameter and i'm going to send the information to my ui application okay so let me do what so everything is over here and i showed the function module also right the last time uh, this is my function module okay i think i closed it so let me open it again just quickly the code and this is my 
function module this is the code just i'm inserting it if it is success i'm getting a success message if there is no success i'm getting the um, so error message header record not created successfully i'm used the simple insert statement over here okay so let me call this and this import is all internal table header item sorry header here and item and shipment and it will send the information as a return parameter go to pattern call function and do it okay so let me these are already declared okay so here that is wa header and this is item this is a shipment so return needs to be declared return is not declared so maybe i can use this one so return is also declared okay so it shipment okay this is small change okay. just name is ship item is just an item and return is it return so what is the header header is w underscore header not ice header that's it and once it is returns so i need to return this and fill it to my uh, deep entity set because it has uh, the value right so data of wa return Here I need just a work area for my return. Return type, uh, it's there, right? There is one structure that's created here. So I'm just going to refer the same. Or you can refer uh, BAPI return to as well. Okay, because the source of this TS return is BAPI underscore return. So W underscore return over here. From here and I have to do a return. Okay. I need one more. Okay. So R E T. Because there are two different names, so that's why. So return I need um, type is equal to wa return type and uh, id yes id so so id and then uh, any number you can just send the same because anyway the structure is same you can do that as well but here i just using only the four things i want so return And this needs to be included or I can say append in your deep entity set because we already created the value or the place to hold the return values. So in the same internal table, I have to hold this one. Why no suggestion? Is there any mistake in the spelling? Yes, underscore did. I changed it, right? Yes underscore data here item navigation return navigation so this internal table to be filled that's all and one more final step everything is ready but everything is available in your deep entity set so whatever input we received and after that whatever return we have sent everything will be in deep entity set but that is not enough so we have to pass the information to this import values er yeah, deep entity set internal table then only it will reflect in your sap gateway whatever you do it's fine but finally you have to fill this internal table so what i had to do was i have a, again there is a method to do that so that is coming under another runtime class so i'll show you go to pattern lab object patterns so that is nothing but conversion SRV runtime. Okay. 
and there is a method called copy data to ref this is the one general get general uh, reference of data get reference of data just do that just click next so here our input is available in es underscore data it's nothing but our deep entity method sorry deep entity internal table and that is going to be included in er deep ENTITY. so i showed you in the signature right this one okay exporting parameter er deep entity so changes code part is done so i have to activate the servers and i have to call it then along with the input field in the post method let's see what is that is not possible in this position okay i'm oh, sorry loop but Is unknown okay spelling mistake you know, return yep pretty printer back to audit okay is almost ready yes done so now i'm going to have the particular service to be activated so go here add service local and uh, Z G I now over here deep part two local object and click next. So it will create the servers and we'll get a URI for this. It's created successfully and metadata was loaded successfully. Just click next and go back. Then find the filter. I think the filter is already enabled. So for Z J I in the star. So here it is deep part two, open SAP gateway client and the entity set as um, header set. So here it is header set and it is a post method. Okay, it is not the get method, it's a post method. So here I have the input file as handy. Okay, so here it is. Copy this and I'm going to use the um, JSON format. This is a left hand panel. So, left panel you have to give the input. So, considering this is the input from your UA application. Okay. So, let me change the values like 450. And here also I can say it's 450. Hopefully, everything is I have added. And it should work. It should give a return saying that record created successfully. So, if you want to see it, you can keep a breakpoint in your functional module and you can see. Okay. So here everything is fine. Let me execute this. It's creating. Yep. Okay. It's happened to me sometimes. There are some mistake in my XML. Sorry, this parsing. I have to correct it. So here's something is not correct because it should not it should everything in a green color okay so here yes okay it won't give any exact name or exact uh, line number so you have to identify it will comes like this this is missing that is missing or invalid name so everything is also depends matter even the uh, case sense also suppose if you say order type as order underscore type and execute you will say it is invalid so order type is invalid because it's case sensitive so it should be t and click execute hope it should work this time yes 201 it says it's created so it will give everything because at the end of the internal table i filled the input values as well right so if you just come down and this is um, header to shipment again ship details whatever is sending the same information is over here and little come down the next is item this is the next is item information so they are sending two items or 450 10 and 20 and uh, the next one is return navigation and return navigation is giving yes header record successfully created and uh, item record successfully created 
and one more is shipment record successfully created. If I execute this again without any changing, I will get an error message. Message is error, not the code. So this is actually for the post method. Okay, don't expect anything error here. If there is any error, then your URI is not correct or something backend is not correct. So the error message comes as usual in your return parameter only. Let me see what is the return parameter over here. Uh, yeah, this is the return. So here it says re, uh, header record not created successfully. So if you go to the table and find 450, it should be available. Let me quickly find out. Just a refresh. So 450 also available. So it should be available on all the other tables. So it's not the big magic over here because normal insert statement. This is item. Yeah, I have 450, 10, and 20. And finally, ship. Execute. Yes, 450 is available. Okay. So if you want to understand more about the code level, so you can have a breakpoint in the particular create deep entity method and execute it from the gateway system, it will go and stops over there. Okay. So hope this might be useful for you because once you want to work more with OData service, so you should be very good in the deep entity set because UI is not ready always uh, sending only single information and they will get repeatedly send the item and shipment and all. They will send everything in one shot. So we have to receive it and update in your um, backend system as well. You have to send the return proper return message to the UI. What is happening? Because they want to show based on the message, they have to uh, take a decision what needs to be shown in the UI level. Okay. So hope you'll get a good idea about deep entity set. Um, if you have any doubt, please uh, write to me. I'm happy to help you. So we'll see more about OData in the following videos. Thank you so much for your time.